So that doesn't fit. These things aren't that comfortable, but if you put a $12,000 McLaren seat in there, it gets a lot more comfortable. <laughs> I am so driving this. Oh, I, think a, I think an actual McLaren is about the same. This is awesome. Are <laughs> oh, you gonna break my legs in this? <laughs> <laughs> So here I am in a little gas-powered dune buggy that uh, that we managed to save, and we're gonna do some pretty cool stuff to this. I have a wild imagination, and we have a 2.4 liter Eco Tech, Eco something, that we're gonna put in the back of this. But that got me to thinking. Um, the fact that we're able to do that is to take uh, this. This thing's got a little 150 cc gas-powered Chinese engine in the back, and it's something happened to it. It blew up. Um, somebody tried working on it and didn't get anywhere, so they ended up deciding to scrap it. Now we get our little gadgets on it, and we'll uh, we'll turn it into something cool. But this is just a temporary thing, and so is the shop, and so is these dirty hands. Um, thinking about we are living in a pretty cool time uh, I am 35 when we made this video and um, I got to see the birth of the internet I've got to see self-driving cars electric cars and it's gonna be pretty cool to see what's gonna be out in 10 years and in 20 years and in 50 years when I'm ready to go um, when uh, I worked in construction before, and when we went to a job site, we were still using corded tools to put a million screws into barn steel when we were putting up big, big barns. And when somebody showed up with an electric or with a cordless drill, they got laughed off the job site. Little 14, 9 volt, 9 volt um, drill to put in screws. And uh, a couple of years that was justified and then out came the 14.4 I was like oh that's actually not a bad drill and then came the 18 volt and there went the corded drill um, and then we thought you know what vehicles nah you know what we've got a range of 100 kilometers who's gonna buy an electric car well it's just the start I'm laughing now because John Deere came out with a tractor an electric tractor um, that <laughs> for every four hours that it works needs to be charged for eight hours does not make sense at all right now but times are changing uh, I grew up with Top Gear Top Gear always made fun of the electric car now um, uh, the Grand Tour is on and the supercar that they were driving was the fastest car that they've ever driven and that is the way that it is gonna go um, these dirty hands and the emissions are going to disappear and we will see the death of the internal combustion engine which kind of sucks um, and it's not that electric vehicles are terrible but we are going to see the birth of self-driving cars and um, we are still a ways away because there's a lot of kinks that need to be worked out yet uh, insurance, who pays for what, um, things like that. We're gonna see this whole thing of these little dune buggies, this working on your own car, all of that is gonna disappear. Now, once we get self-driving cars, just imagine if you had a trucking company, instead of paying a trucker or two truckers to drive in one truck and ha being forced to go to sleep and go off the road for, for food and for bathrooms you could have a truck that drives 24 hours straight and um, needs no no accidents it's on its route it will get to where you're going uh, lock doors that, that back into whatever to get unlocked um, you could triple your revenue by getting rid of your drivers same with taxi drivers um, same with bus drivers same with taxi like, did I say taxis um, all of that is going to disappear by vehicles that are just going to bring you to where you need to go on battery power without a driver. Um, and that's sad because there, people are going to miss out on a lot. Um, there was nothing that I wanted more when I was 16 
than to get my license, get behind the car, and it meant ultimate freedom. It meant that I could get behind the wheel of my little pickup truck and I could go anywhere. It was my stress relief. When I had a bad day, I went and drove by the lake, squealed my tires around some corners. Um, it was the truck that I picked my first date up in. Uh, it broke down, I ran it out of gas, and we sat by the side of the road, and it was a fantastic time. <laughs> and the youth of that, of, on the next coming generations are going to miss all that. Um, and, and it really pains me that they will never have that freedom to, um, to experience pushing on the throttle and, and hearing noise. And I don't think the electric vehicle and the self-driving cars are going to be a bad thing, but I think we are going to lose an entire section of our society that has been around for centuries whether it be a horse that pulled you around you still got to control the horse and when vehicles came around they've been around for 120 130 years you could tell that to wherever you want it to go a self-driving car it's gonna it, i don't know how they're gonna control it but i will know when my daughter leaves the driveway where she's going through tracking I could probably point my computer and tell the car to turn around and bring it right back again. And, and that freedom is going to disappear for a lot of people. And I think it will change society as a whole. Um, not everybody has the capability to run their own business or get a degree in, in something um, advanced. We need people to drive taxis and we need people to drive trucks and we need people to fix them as well. Um, there's going to be a lot of people out of work and, and I'm very curious to see how that's going to change our whole society as a whole. So back in elementary school, we were told, you know what, you need to know your multiplication tables because you will never be walking around with a calculator around all the time. Um, and well, they were wrong. So not only does this have a calculator, this is also controlling our lives. It's our GPS, it's our communications, it's, it's, it's everything. And um, the smarter that this thing gets, the dumber we seem to get. Uh, we used to need to know how to read a map. And I remember driving with my buddy. He was navigator. I was driver. We'd go to the city in Toronto and, and big lights and, and we're in the country here. And he would say, next street is this and then turn left. And next two streets up that, you turn right. Now we just punch a button in here and then just shut our minds off and we don't have to think about that anymore we've got lights telling us oh don't turn um there's new commercials that are have people driving and the car stops for them and they're like oh, oh what happened hey you need to know you need those mechanical skills to be able to look ahead and stay focused on that and hit the brakes and stop so you don't run over pedestrians and rerun the car in front of you and um i'm worried that now that with the self-driving cars, we're losing a whole mechanical function in our head, uh, the motor skills to be able to do two things at the same time. I don't know if that'll be replaced by anything. I, I'm worried that uh, when laptops came out and when computers came out, it says, oh, now you can do your work faster. Well, no, all, it used to be that at five o'clock you went home and you didn't have to pick up the phone if you didn't want to. Um, the higher ups, I'm sure they had calls at supper time, distracting them from their families, but the average worker got to leave their work at, at work and go home and there was nothing they could do to further what they were doing from uh, eight to five. Now they introduce, oh, laptops, you can work faster. No, now you can work during your lunch and you can take the laptop home and it can ding and buzz and rattle all night long and distract you from your families and from your other things. Oh, self-driving cars. Well, they're going to make it so you can, you can communicate with your passengers better and you can, you can uh, have more time to yourself. No, what it's going to do is just a bunch of people like this in their cars facing each other while their car drives into where they're going mindlessly. And uh, the zombie apocalypse is real, people. And I think that the self-driving car is very quickly going to bring us there. So, <laughs> so this is why we are building this. This is going to be a little dune buggy with four-wheel brakes, maybe four-wheel steering. We're going to take out this puny little 150cc Chinese-made engine. We're going to put this McLaren seat in the middle. We're going to flip this rack up. 
change the rack and pinion around a little bit and then we're gonna cut the whole back half off and put this little 2.4 liter Ecotech out of my wife Saturn in here and do wheelies because that is our our defiance against self-driving electric cars doing wheelies in a dune buggy with your wife's old four-cylinder engine and if it can't do it I'm sure we can put another 2RS two-stage turbo on it uh, crank up the fuel, put a couple bigger injectors on it. I think the internals in that are good to about 250 horse. And we are doing wheelies because I am against the electric car. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you think I'm nuts. I'm definitely nuts for doing wheelies in this thing. But let me know what you guys think 30 years from now will look like. Uh, is it going to be drones flying us around, just landing in pods and driving us around electrically? I don't know. It'll be pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching. Here we go.